Assalamu alaikum to all of you. My name is Hamad Sarwar and I'm the facilitator for this course, ACCA Practice of Bar Session for Paper FA. This is the first time ACCA is organizing the practice to pass session for this paper. And I think it's a very good opportunity for both the students and tutors to interact with each other and to create a better results. So these practice to pass sessions, as you know, the format, it will be based on the core paper areas of the syllabus. We will consider and revise the main and the core part of the paper. We will discuss about the exam techniques. We will discuss about the past papers, uh, the way that you should have to attempt the paper, the pass rates. And we'll be having discussion about a lot of different things about the kind of concepts and other techniques that we use to, 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 to pass the examination in the procedure. So in the professional examination, it's a big challenge to pass the exam in first attempt, but you people are so lucky to have this paper uh, because the percentage of passing of this paper is around 70 to 78 percent on average. So out of 100 students, more than 70 students can easily pass these exams as for the history. So Let's start with the brief introduction. You see website. <coughs> There is a students section in which we'll be having a study resources, study support resources area. And in this area, you have to select the ACT qualification and the paper FA. Okay, the label structure and the paper structure of the paper FFA and FA is 100% same. So here we have some resources that ACT provides to the student. That is one of the area is the introduction to the financial accounting. Uh, it will tell you about the basic details of the subject. Examiner's guidance. When we go on this area, you will see there are a lot of, a lot of examiner's report available, which you can study. And you have to learn from the mistakes that the students have done previously. So it is again a very important resource. Then when we go back to the main structure, then we have a syllabus section, then we have an examinable document. Examinable document, if we look at the examination document for this session, that is September 2, it actually provides the list of the accounting standards that is examinable in this paper. Like we have to study IS1, IS2, IS7, IS10, IS16, 27, 28, 37, 38, IFRS3, IFRS10, and IFRS50 with the conceptual framework. So these are the key IFRSs which is examinable in the paper FA. Okay. I'm just giving you the review of the
okay there is an i think there's an issue with the voice uh i just want all of you guys to just give me the feedback of my voice is my voice is clear to all of you guys you have a chat box you can see on the screen If you have a chat box, you can see on the screen. If you have any question in your mind regarding this paper or ACCA, you can ask on the chat box. Please do not hesitate to ask any question regarding this paper. And I also wanted to know that in this paper, paper FA, what are the most challenging topics that you people are facing? Or you think that the topic which is the most difficult for this paper? Okay, one of the feedback that we are receiving is the consolidation. Okay. Okay, correction of errors is one of the feedback from the student. Let's see that. We have company accounts. Correction of errors. Company accounts. Okay. Consolidation. Okay, first of all, what strategy and approach that we are using for this practice to pass session i have prepared a day wise plan for all of you guys now this is my day wise plan you can see on the screen in the day one today on 2nd february we are going to cover the company accounts along with ias one the day two, we are going to discuss about the cash flow topic along with IES 7. In day three, we will be discussing about the consolidation topic along with few standards that is important in consolidation. Then in day four, we will be discussing about the topic ratios in IFRS. And in day five, we are discussing about the remaining IFRSs with the framework. And in this whole process, we will be discussing the key concepts of different topics and the question that you can, uh, that might be asked you for section A and section A, like MCQ style or multiple uh, answer style. And we also will be pre preparing for section B, which is MTQs area for this paper. So we'll be focusing on, in fact, the key topics of paper FA, country accounts, cash flow, consolidation, ratio, IFRSs, and along with other topics, if you think that we should have to cover, you can ask me. I will prepare a WhatsApp group for all of you guys. You have to follow my day-wise plan. And on a daily basis, I will give you some assignments that you should have to uh, cover and complete before the next session. And by the end of this session, I will share you a mock examination. So believe me and trust me, if you follow all the directions which I'm giving to you, you can pass this examination in first attempt and inshallah in the month of February. So I will make sure that you can pass this paper with a very good marks and in the month of February. But you have to strictly follow the plan that I'm sharing with you. So on a daily basis, I will provide you some lecture handouts and along with the practice handout. So you have to attempt the practice handout on a daily basis and try to uh, cover up the whole topic from my slides and 
from the examination kit. So yes, you just select one kit. It might be Kaplan or BPP. So you have to attempt the questions of the relevant topic that we have covered on a daily basis from that kit. And by the end of the session, I will provide you a mock examination. So if you pass all my three mock examination, you will definitely pass the examination. Inshallah. How can I join on a laptop? You just find uh, ACC has sent you an email. You just open the email and uh, there will be a link for this. No, no. They have mistakenly, actually, they have mistakenly updated the AAA handout. So there are a few handouts that I have shared. I think it's wrongly updated on this paper because there are some handouts which is related to the audit paper actually it's not triple a paper so i request the management to please update the handout section so there i have shared two handouts with the acc team the first is on my presentation slides and the second one is a practice handout so I request all of you to please download my two handouts, practice one and the day one presentation. Okay. One of the question is, uh, I'm an FD student and I have to give FA one paper. Now this session is all about FA examination and FFA. So I think it's not related to FA1 examination. So if you have already studied FFA paper or FA paper or even FA2, if someone has uh, completely studied the paper FA2, then it might be relevant for these, for those students. But if you are just a student of FA1 examination, and I think this session is not relevant. Okay. Now you just see the percentages of this paper. And it, I think it's a high scoring paper. Average percentage is 70% in the ACCA. And in an ACCA, if the percentage is 70 percent that it means you can say that a lot of students are passing this paper without any trouble so it's very important to see this that percentage passing percentage of this paper is very good now why this paper is so important the first thing is financial accounting is actually the base of accountancy profession. So this paper is subsequently connected with FR paper. That is one of the key paper of skills module. This paper knowledge will be used for AA, that is audit and assurance paper. And then FR is subsequently connected with the SBR paper. So the basis of this paper is very important for other papers because it is connected with financial reporting FR, SBR paper, and AA paper. And AA is then finally connected with AAA paper, that is E7 examination. And the knowledge of this paper will also be used in SBL examination. So there are a lot of paper which are connected with the base of the financial account. So if you are weak in this paper, or you have cleared this paper with 40, 50 to 60% marks, then definitely you'll be having problem in these examinations. So I recommend all my students to, to have a sound grip on this paper because it will going to give you a lot of benefit in all other papers. 
don't you worry about the handouts i will update and the management team will update soon that's not a big issue please try to focus on the on the lecture which i which i'm discussing right now and try to participate in the process discussion process if you have any question in your mind like this paper you can ask it on the chat box now the second slide is it's a two hour examination which comprises of section a and section b section a is having 35 questions of two marks each the total weightage of section a is 70 percent 70 out of 100 and for section b we'll be having two multiple task questions of 15 marks each and each question is having more than two or more requirements so the total weightage of this section is 30 marks okay so all questions are compulsory there is no option and choice is available this is the passing ratio of this paper now this is our day wise planner which we will be following I have exam tonight. Please cover the working of unless focus. You can call it. Okay. I'm just sharing my number with you guys. If you people have any issue that is that you wanted to discuss on an urgent basis, or after this session, if you wanted to ask any question, you can uh, just send me a message on the WhatsApp and we will discuss the matter. I'm just sharing my number. Please acknowledge if you have received the number. So I have just shared my number, WhatsApp number. You just send me the message on the WhatsApp. We will make a group, discussion group, till the examination date. And you can discuss the matters or the concepts with the other students or in fact with me. If you wanted to ask anything so just send me a message on the whatsapp and and i will add all you guys all of you guys in the whatsapp group okay so starting from the topic company accounts so today in a three hours period we have to cover the topic company accounts so if you all all of you are, are ready for the topic so just write yes in the chat box so we can we can start the session. Okay, also write the name of the cities from which the people belong. Name of the cities. So we have students from mostly from the Karachi, Lahore, Rawalpindi, Talcourt, Lahore, Wakat, TS campus, Shekhupura. This fact that we are covering all the topics through IES, but not so many. Is this method efficient for the understanding? Yeah, this pattern is, is good for the students who have already started the paper. But if you are already you have not yet started this paper or you are in the process of starting this paper, it might be difficult for you to understand this. So because it's a revision session. So it's a practice to pass the vision session. It will be helpful for those who have already covered the whole flavors of paper FA and they just wanted to give the examination. You can just take all the lectures and just go in the examination.
Yes, on a daily basis, ACCA will send you the recordings of these webinars that will also be available on the ACCA YouTube channel. Okay, so let's start topic, company accounts. What is the company? Company is basically a separate legal entity, is usually called artificial. Company is called artificial person, created by law having perpetual succession perpetual succession and separate existence from its own these are the key points that we should know about the company We all must know this that the company is an artificial person. Artificial person means company is itself a person in the eyes of law. Company can buy its property on its own name. Company can have a tax uh, income tax. Company have to pay its own income tax. Company can open its own bank account. Company can do anything which a normal person can do. And company will always be created through a law. And that law is called company law, which you people are going to study in this paper in paper F W L W F4 exam. Then company is having a perpetual succession. Perpetual succession means continuous existence. Company is not dependent on its owners. Company is having separate existence from its owners means. The liability is limited, limited liability of shareholders. Is that clear? If it is clear, just write yes in the chat box so can we can go further. Which point you want me to repeat? The last point that I have said is the the liability of the shareholders of the company is limited. So in the company, we, we must say the liability is limited to the extent of the amount that you have invested in the business. So do you people have any idea that why we are starting this paper? What is the key objective of starting this paper? This point is most important for this paper to study because so you want to know about the perpetual succession. Perpetual succession means continuous existence. Company is not dependent on its owners. If owner has sold his stake in the company, company will still Remain. If the even uh, if there is a death of the owners, one owner or more than one owner, the company is going to uh, to remain constant on its place. The company is having a continuous existence, which is not dependent on the owners, which the sole partnership business or partnership business does. Usually, if we have two partners and both partners die, the business will dissolve. Partnership will dissolve because there is no existence of the partner. But the company is not dependent on the owners. That is the concept of perpetual succession. Okay, can you guys have any idea that why we are studying this paper? What is the key objective of this paper? This thing is very important for your knowledge. Now you should know this, the key objective of this paper is to prepare the financial statement of the business. And what we do after the preparation of this paper, of this financial statement, we hand it over to the relevant stakeholders. 
who took their economic decision. So there are a number of stakeholders relevant to the company. The customer is a stakeholder, the supplier is a stakeholder, the investor is a stakeholder, the shareholder is a stakeholder, government is a stakeholder, the loan provider is a stakeholder. The stakeholder is the topic which we all, I think you have already studied in the different papers of ACCA and you will study in the different papers of ACCA. So stakeholders are basically parties who have interest into the business. So we have to prepare, the objective of this paper is to prepare the financial statements of the business and those financial statements will be delivered to the stakeholders and they took their relevant decisions based on these financial statements. And we make an independent, we took an independent assurance on these financial statements. Uh, and this concept is called auditing. So before uh, delivering the financial statements to the stakeholders, we took the independent assurance from external party that is called external audit that we will be discussing in paper F8, AA paper. And in this two, three papers, we will study how to prepare the financial statements of a single company and a group of companies. So when we use the word group of companies, that means we are we want to uh, discuss about the consolidation. So in this paper, F3, FR, F7, and SBR, which is previously called P2. In these three papers, we have to learn the art of preparing the financial statements based on the IFRS. Based on IFRS, IFRS means International Financial Reporting Standard. Okay. Preparing the account, uh, financial statements according to, not all, only according to law, it, it should be according to IFRS. Okay. So now, company. The capital of the company has broken down into small pieces, which is called share. So what is share? Share means the smallest unit of the capital. The smallest unit of the capital. The smallest unit of the capital is called share. So what we do in the company, we broke down the overall capital investment into small pieces with a fixed value, which is called face value or we called it par value. So the capital of the company is broken down into small pieces and each piece is having a fixed value which is called the par value or the face value. So when the company raises the capital, it has to issue the shares to the shareholders. So company has issued the shares to the shareholders And shareholders in return invest in the company. So the word that we use for the company is share capital. Not only capital, we use the word share capital. So how we can calculate the amount of the share capital? It's the number of shares that we have issued into the par value of the share. So suppose if the par value of the share is 10 rupees 
and we have issued one lakh number of shares so the amount of the share capital will be one lakh multiplied by ten it will be ten lakh the share capital amount can be calculated as number of shares into the power So whatever value that we have initially fixed for the company is called the par value. So suppose we have fixed 10 rupees or or you can say one dollar in fact, one dollar as the par value of the company. So when we issue the shares into the public, the market value of the shares might go up over the period or go down or remains the same it all depends on the performance of the company and secondly the economic condition of the country and there are a number of other factors that affect the share prices but mostly the price will be determined by the performance of the company it might, it might be possible the power value of the share is one dollar but the market value is hundred dollars or the market value of that share is 0.5 dollar or it might remain the same as the power value. some question from the students share capital is the total number of shares in the company Share capital is the total number of shares in the company multiplied by power value of the share. Because share capital is not actually just numbers, number of shares, it is actually the amount of the capital. So when we talk about the amount of the capital, we have to multiply the number of shares into the power value. So normally what accounting entry we made when the company has issued when the company has uh, raised the capital with the accounting entry can you write it on the check box if the company has raised the cash in the normal business so what accounting entry that we make cash or bank debit very good and capital credit Very good. Cash debit and capital credit. Please try to participate. We are there are a lot of students who are uh, right now attending this session. So I want all of you guys to participate in the question question answer session. So when the company has raised the capital for a business, the accounting entry will be cash debit and capital credit. Normally, let me. This is the entry that we make for the sole partnership business or partnership. But what, when we discuss about the company, the accounting entry will remain the same on the debit side. But on the credit side, we have to add share capital. It's not about the capital, we have to add the value share capital. The cash debit and share capital credit. So this should be the accounting entry. So all of, I, I want all of you guys to just please try to attempt this example one and make the accounting entry for this. Yes. Give just ten seconds.
Okay, so let's start this question. Big Boss, Big Boss Limited issues 2 lakh 50,000, 25 cents shares at par. 25 cents share at par means the par value of each share is actually 0 0.25 per share. So when we make the accounting entry, the accounting entry should be cash or bank debit and share capital credit because we are issuing the shares at the par value. The counting entry will go on the credit side of the share capital. So, number of shares is 250,000 multiplied by 0.25. So, the amount will become 62,500. Very good. 62,500. Yes, totally fine. Is it compulsory for the company to issue the shares at the par value only? Please give your answer. Is it company? Is it compulsory for the company to issue the shares at the par value only? No. It's not compulsory. Very good. Company can issue its shares at a premium, or even company can issue its shares at a discount. Matlab means company can issue its shares above the par value or below the par value. So whenever the company is going to issue its shares, it has to follow the market trend. So if the market value is above the par value, then it means that you are issuing the shares at a premium. Very good. So moving on towards the next slide. Yes. You can see here the company has issued. We are discussing the same company which is Big Boss having a par value of 0 0.25. But it is going to issue its shares at a price of $1.25 per share. So there will be a premium of $1 exactly. Initially, share might be issued at the par value, but usually shares are issued above the par value, even at the initial acquisition, at the initial stage. Okay, so what will be the counting entry for this question? You have to make the cash. Debit, share capital credit, the par value, and the excess amount will go in the share premium account. The excess amount will go in the share premium account. So the cash will be debited by the amount of 350,000 into 1.25. Please give me calculate and give your answer. Three lakh fifty thousand into one point two five. Four thirty seven five hundred. But the share capital will be credited with the par value, which is 0 0.25. So now one will be 87,500. Minus 37,500. So the amount of the share premium will be 3,50,000. Is it done? So I request all of you guys to please do participate in these calculations because 
if you participate in the uh, in the calculation process, then you will enjoy the session. Otherwise, it will be a boring session. Really. No, share capital should be credited with the par value and the excess amount will go into share premium. So the excess amount over the par value is $1 actually per share. Company has issued right now. The company has issued the share at a value of 1.25. Previously, in example one, we have seen that the power value of each share is 0.25, and the excess amount above the power value is $1. So, when we broke down the value of 1.25 per share into power value and above the power value. So this amount will be a share premium balance. And this amount is share capital based on the power value. Yes, the cash will be calculated in the market price. Okay, whether these two accounting entries are clear to all of you guys, the first thing is cash debit, share capital credit, 52,500. The second entry is Cash debit, share capital, and share inventory. Whether these two entries are clear to all of you? Okay, wonderful. So my the, my question is, when I when I combine these two entries, what will be the share capital and share minimum balance? And I, when we combine these two trees, you can you can use the word cash with bank interchangeably. Usually, when we company issues the shares, the amount is actually received directly in the bank. So it's better to use the bank word rather than cash. So can we can we calculate the total number of the share capital after these two entries and share minimum account? So previously we have issued shares of sixty two thousand five hundred. Plus, now we have issued a share capital of 87,500. So by adding these two values, we got the value of 62,500 plus 80. It will be 1 lakh 50,000. Now tell me, is that clear? So if you wanted to ask anything, please do ask immediately. Otherwise, we will go forward. Yes, the one who wanted to ask something. Please just write in the chat box. Why did you add both? 
actually if the company has issued shares over and over year after one year and after the time period then the overall capital amount and the cash amount of the same company will add it up Actually, these two accounting entries are related to the same company. I'm just giving you the example. If the questioner says to you to add the revised capital and calculate the revised capital structure after these two entries, so you have to add both the share capital and share even entries of the questions. So the question might ask you. To calculate the revised structure after these two transactions. So these are the two transactions in which the company initially the company has issued the shares at the par value, and subsequently the company has issued the shares at the premium price. So what is the now what is the now revised capital structure after these two transactions? So the revised capital structure is we have issued shares at a par value with the with a weightage of one lakh fifty thousand. And we have issued the shares at a premium of three lakh thousand. So this total amount is called total equity of the business. So what is the total equity of the business? Now, now after these two transactions, the total equity will be five lakh. So there is a difference between the share capital and the equity owed. When we talk about the equity, equity means the whole. Whole portion of the capital, which might have different accounts. How is share premium three thirty-five thousand? It's not thirty-five thousand. It's three lakh fifty thousand. Actually, you can see in this question, if the company has issued three lakh fifty thousand shares at a at a value of one point two five. So when we drop down these two values, out of one point two five point two five is the amount of the par value, which will go in the share capital account, and the excess amount of one dollar will go in the share premium account. We have calculated the share premium figure by multiplying the number of shares, three lakh fifty thousand into the par value. Okay. So, is it clear to all of you? Should we move forward? If you have any question in your mind, please do do ask it immediately. Otherwise, we have to move forward. Okay, wonderful. I'm moving towards the next slide. So we have two types of shares. The so one is the ordinary share, and the second one is the preference share. So you have the option you can buy ordinary shares or you can uh, buy preference shares. At the same time, the company has the option. Similarly, the company has the option. They they can issue the preference shares, they issue the capital amount, or even they can issue the ordinary shares. But they have a different features. They carry voting power, but they don't have 
voting rights. Now, what is the meaning of voting power? When the company forms, the top body of the company is called the board of directors. So you have to select few members to run the operations of the board. And the board of directors is the brain of the company which runs the whole company. So, in order to select the individuals into the board of directors, you have to cast a vote. So, if the company has got more than one lakh, one lakh shareholders, so it's not possible to make all the shareholders into the board of directors. So, out of 100,000 shareholders, we nominate 8 to 10 people to run the affair of the board of directors that is called non-executive directors leds so who can who can cast the vote in the election for the nomination of NEDs? only ordinary shareholders preference shareholders have no rights to cast the vote in the election of the company Okay. Yes, preference shares is very rare in the market. Non executive directors are the representative of the shareholders who have been appointed and who runs the whole board and the board actually runs the company. Company can issue any number of shares. There is no limit for the company to issue, like the company can issue one lakh share, two lakh share, it, it, it might be 100 lakh shares, might be 1 million, it might be 1 billion. It all depends on the company. Okay, there's a difference between non-executive directors and executive directors. Executive directors are the employees of the company who are technical experts. For example, the finance, finance director is an executive director of the company. But the non-executive directors of the company are actually the representative of the shareholders. Who just make sure that the executive directors and the other members should not cheat with the shareholders. So they are actually observing the whole company on the behalf of the shareholders. Okay. The second thing is yes, okay. Ordinary shareholders will get the variable dividend. Variable dividend means the dividend might be higher than the preference dividend, they might be lower than the preference dividend, or there might be no dividend. But they will get the fixed dividend. Now, the concept is what is dividend? Dividend means the share of the profit distributed to the shareholder. So whatever the profit the company has earned, it has to distribute some of the profit to its shareholders, to its investors. This is the concept of dividend. The dividend is fixed for the preference shareholders and dividend is variable for ordinary shareholders. They will get the prior priority in case of distribution of dividend and they will get the residual claim. Residual claim means if sufficient dividend remains after the distribution to the preference shareholders, then you are, might get the dividend. So it's not compulsory that it's not compulsory that all the 
ordinary shareholders will get the dividend on an annual basis. It all depends on the profit. Okay. So these are the three major differences between ordinary shareholders and preference shareholders. Now, preference shares can be redeemable preference shares or irredeemable preference shares. Preference shares can be redeemable or irredeemable. Now, what does redeemable means exactly? Redeemable means the company has company has taken your amount initially for investment purpose, but after some time, company will pay back your amount. Company will redeem means pay back your amount after some time interval. But for the irredeemable company, it's not going to give you your investment back. You have to sell your shares to someone else in order to redeem your investment. So there's a huge difference between redeemable and irredeemable. Now, my question is, if we see the accounting equation and asset equals to capital plus liability, which part is redeemable, capital or liability? Which part is redeemable means which part of the investment that you have to pay back? Yes, it's the liability portion that you have to return. But what about the capital? Do we need to return the capital to the shareholders? Yes or no? Yes, you have to return the investment to the shareholders only in case of dissolution. When you are going to dissolve the company, then you have to return the amount to the shareholders. So can you tell me the list of preferences that we use in the case of winding of the company when there is a winding of the company the assets of the company will be sold so how we distribute the cash to different stakeholders who will get the amount back immediately and who will get the amount on the second number or who will get the amount on the third number so in case of dissolution do remember this point always liability will get the first preference first the company will have to return the liability so if there is any current or non current liability first the company has to pay all its liabilities and after that Preference shareholders will get their amount first and if the amount remains after the distribution to the preference shareholders, the remaining amount will get the ordinary shareholders. Like if preference shareholders have invested 1 lakh, 
ordinary shareholders has invested 1 lakh a company has only 1 lakh rupees for the distribution to the shareholders so it is not possible that the company can distribute this 1 lakh into half into ordinary and preference shares first you have to pay the full amount to the preference shareholders if there is something remains then you can pay to the ordinary shareholders so then that's why we always say that the ordinary shareholder will get the residual claim residual claim means that if you if we if the company has got the sufficient funds then it will pay the amount otherwise company does not pay to the ordinary shareholder so we were discussing about the preference shareholders preference shares can be redeemable or irredeemable so if the preference shares are redeemable the company says that it is more likely like a liability it is more like a liability so it should be classified into liability and if the company has issued the irredeemable preference shares it is more like a equity and it should be classified into equity so do do remember this point the redeemable preference shareholders or redeemable preference share capital is actually the liability of the business and the irredeemable will be the equity of the business the entry will remain the same for both the cases the entry will be cash or bank debit and preference share capital credit but it all depends on the classification so when you are preparing the balance sheet and you have seen a redeemable preference shares here then it should be reported in the non general liability section if the preference shares are redeemable in nature but if the preference shares are irredeemable then it should be classified into equity section is that clear yeah preference share capital credit okay next here here is a question for you guys just make the accounting entry for this part of the question
ओके जी नाउ द कंपनी हैज इशूड वन लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड शेयर एट ईच इज हैविंग अ पार वैल्यू ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंट तो वन लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड इंटू जीरो पॉइंट टू फाइव तो द अमाउंट विल बिकम थर्टी वन थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी The accounting entry will be debit cash credit preference area. Is it clear? and you can see this on the screen that when the company has issued the preference shares the percentage of the dividend will always be attached with the number of shares because as we have discussed previously that the preference share holders will get the fixed dividend so fixed dividend percentage will always be decided at the time of issue of preference shares so they will get 6% return So if I wanted to calculate the dividend for the preference shares, what I need to do is to multiply the investment into preference shares multiplied by six percent. So this is the amount of the dividend for preference shareholders. So what will be the amount of the dividend? Three one two five zero into six percent. It's one eight seven five. Very good. So one eight seven five is the amount of the dividend. So what is the concept of dividend? What is dividend actually? Dividend is what is dividend? dividend is actually the share of profit very good it is actually the share of profit and the profit account of the company is called retain earnings so do remember this the dividend will always be distributed from the retain earnings so the accounting entry will be retain earnings debit and cash One eight seven five. So the profit account of the company is called the retained earnings. So whenever the company distributes the dividend, means it distributes profit, it has to distribute the profit from the retained earnings account. so the name of the company is still the same big boss that means this question is also related to question number 1 and 2 so if you remember in question number 1 we have issued 2 lakh 50000 shares and in question number 2 we have issued 3 lakh 50000 shares So, how many ordinary shares we have issued up till date, up till today? So, previously you have issued two lakh fifty thousand shares, plus subsequently you have issued three lakh fifty thousand shares. So, the total number of shares that the company has issued till today is six hundred thousand ordinary shares. And the question also says that the big boss limited also decided to pay a dividend of five cents per share. Five cents per share means zero point zero five dollars.
So what will be the amount of the ordinary dividend? Very good. So the amount will be thirty thousand. Why is total share six lakh? Actually, I have discussed already this that question number three. With the name Big Boss is actually related to question number one and two. So when we go back and see in question number one, the company has issued two lakh fifty thousand shares, and in question number two, the company has issued three lakh fifty thousand shares. So till today, the company has issued in total six lakh ordinary shares, and out of this six lakh ordinary shares, company is going to pay. Five cents per share as a dividend. Is it clear? Okay. Talking about the dividend, dividend can be announced. In percentage form or in per share form, dividend can be announced in percentage form and in per share form. So, if the company has announced dividend number of uh, percentage form, so how we can calculate the dividend in terms of percentage? Like percentage of the dividend into number of shares. Into parity. Do you remember this? That whenever the company had issued uh, some shares at whatever be the price, dividend will always be the percentage of the parity. So we always ignore the market value of the share when the company is going to give the dividend. The dividend will always be the percentage of the parity. And if you have been given a per share dividend, like in example three. Per share dividend should be multiplied with number of shares. For example, I will give you the dividend percentage form or per share. Okay, so now. All of you are guys are requested to attempt this example four. It has no link with the previous question. So it's a new question for you guys. Please do attempt it.
Okay, let's start the question. Now, the entity has issued 1 million shares with a nominal value of $1 each. So the company has issued ordinary shares of 1 million of $1 each. So the accounting entry will be cash or bank debit, 1 million and ordinary share capital credited by 1 million. And 100,000 irredeemable preference shares with a normal value of 0 0.5. So the accounting entry will be bank debit and preference share capital credit. Still deliverable 50,000. And on ordinary shares, company is going to pay nine cents per share. So for per share dividend, we have to calculate dividend by one number of shares in two point zero point zero nine. So it will be I think nine thousand. For the preference shares. Percentage was given to us, which will be multiplied by the amount of the share capital, which will be 2500. So, 1 million is 90,000 plus 2,500. So, the total amount of the will be 92,500. The accounting entry will be debit and credit 92,500. Retain earnings 92,500. How do you find out the value of the preference shares? The company has issued 1 lakh preference shares and each is having a par value of 0 0.5. So by multiplying 100,000 into 0 0.5, we got the value of the preference shares. And when we apply 5% of this amount, we will get the dividend of preference shareholders. The percentage will be used for the calculation of the dividend. We issue dividends from preference shares and from the ordinary share capital. Yes.
Hello. Uh, maybe, can you hear my voice? Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry, I was disconnected. Okay, so we have some questions from the student side. Now the first question that I missed, okay. Uh, you said earlier that in case of dividend percentage, we calculate the dividend by multiply percentage of the following. Yes. Okay. The amount of the share capital, how we have calculated this 50,000 figure? 50,000 is actually number of shares and multiply by power value. So when we take the amount of the share capital, it is also always calculated as the number of shares into power value. So all you need to do is to just multiply it with a percentage and we got the value of them. Or otherwise you can even start from the scratch, but you will, you will get the same result. Like you can see here that we have issued 100,000 shares and each share is having a power value of 0 0.5 and we are giving a dividend of 5% per share. So we'll get the same 2,500 figure which we already calculated by multiplying it with the share capital figure. Is it clear? Do we have any other question in your mind? Okay. So please, if you have any question, please do ask it immediately. Otherwise, you have to move forward. Okay. One of the students is asking how we get 92,000. Company has issued ordinary shares and company has issued preference shares. Company has issued 1 lakh preference shares and 1 million ordinary shares. Ordinary shares will get the dividend of 0 0.09 per share. So the amount of the dividend for the ordinary shareholders is 90,000. And preference shareholders are getting a dividend in terms of percentage. So you have to first multiply it with the power value, which is 0 0.5, and multiply it with the percentage. You will get the dividend of 2500. So by adding these two figures, you get the value of 92,500. Yes, nominal value and power value is same. Now moving forward. Now, sometimes company has issued free shares to the shareholder. Free shares means without any consideration. Without any consideration, these shares are called bonus shares. But they will be provided to only existing shareholders. It's, this offer is not for the new shareholders new investors it is only for the existing shareholders and company issues the bonus shares for free and in a particular proportion one is to four what is the meaning of one for four what is the meaning of one for four one for four means for every four shares, you will get one bonus share. But that means if you have got eight shares, you will get two new bonus shares. 
तो कंपनी कैन गिव द बोनस शेयर इन एनी प्रोपोर्शन तो समटाइम इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर द स्टूडेंट टू हैंडल द प्रोपोर्शन एट शेयर तो यू कैन सिंपली डिवाइड वन फॉर फोर मीन्स वन अपॉन फोर दैट मीन्स ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट बोनस so whatever number of shares that we have you will get 25% bonus share suppose i have got 1 lakh ordinary shares so how many bonus shares should i get it will be sorry it will be 25% of 1 lakh shares so the number of bonus shares will be 25000 is it clear So it is clear. So I want all of you guys to just calculate the number of bonus shares that the company has issued in example five. Number of bonus shares the company has issued in example number five. so let's start company is giving a bonus of 144 144 means 1 upon 4 it means 25% bonus shares the company is giving to the shareholder so for 50000 number of shares in total Company is going to issue twelve thousand five hundred bonus shares. Is it twelve thousand five hundred or I made a mistake? So three thousand into point two five, it will be twelve thousand five hundred. Yes. and do remember this point that bonus shares will always be issued at the par value so we have issued 12500 number of shares but while but we are, when we have to make the accounting entry we have to multiply this figure with the number of shares par value par value of each share is 0.5 So what will be the accounting entries for this? Always we use the share premium for for the issue of bonus shares. The accounting entry will be share premium debit and share capital ordinary share capital trade. Because the company is not going to issue any cash against the bonus issue. So therefore, share premium debit and share capital by six two five zero.
six two twenty six. I think it's clear. Share premium is also one of the account in which the company has got profits. So for bonus shares only, accounting says that you can use the share premium account. But if there is no balance in the share premium account, you can use the retain earnings account or any other reserve account. So one of the questions that examiner can ask you in the examination, what will be the impact of the bonus shares on the total equity of the business? Either it will increase, it will decrease, what will remain the same? What will be the impact on the total equity of the business after the issue of bonus shares? Very good. The answer is it will remain the same because one of the equity account is debited means it is deducted for the share your account and it will be added in the share capital account so the total equity we are actually deducting the one figure and simply adding the other figure so when we simple uh, in the simple maths when we do minus 100 and plus 100 net answer will be zero So the net impact on the equity total equity remains. So I want all of you guys to make accounting entries of both the transactions. The first transaction is Banana Bread Limited issued ordinary shares of fifty thousand with a par value of zero point five at a market value of one point five. The accounting entry will be cash and bank debit. Share capital and share premium. The amount would be fifty thousand into one point five. It will be seventy five thousand. Zero point five. Twenty five thousand. The excess amount will go in the share premium. Share premium debit. Share capital debit. Sixty five. So these are the two accounting entries that we made. So what will be the balance of the share capital and share premium account after these two transactions? Can you calculate? The balance of the share premium account after these two entries. Balance in the share capital account will be three one two five zero. Very good.
And what about the premium account? The premium account it will be four three seven five zero. Very good. So what we have done the credit and credit we have added the credit credit figure, but we have to deduct the debit credit figure. So we have to make the adjusting entry of the share premium account, which is four three seven five zero. Any confusions? Wonderful. Seventy five thousand part. Okay. In the first phase, the company has issued fifty thousand shares at a market value of one point five. So the bank will be debited by one point five per share. State capital will be credited by zero point five, and share premium will be credited by the excess amount, which is one dollar. But when the company has issued the bonus share, it has to distribute this profit to the shareholders. So the accounting entry will be share premium debit and share capital credit. So when the share capital account is credited, crediting in both the accounting entries, we have to add these two figures: twenty-five thousand plus six two five zero. As you can clearly see in the Accounting entry section that share premium is credited with fifty thousand, but debited with six two five zero. So these two entries amount will be adjusted, and the net figure will be four three seven five zero reported in the share premium account. So actually, the amount of the share premium is transferred to the share capital. Mm -hmm. So the next topic is right shares. Right shares is actually the issue of new shares. That's a very important thing. Right shares is the issue of new shares to the existing shareholder. But in the right shares, company raises the cash. So the basic difference between the bonus shares and the right share is bonus shares is free for the existing shareholders and right share is issued against the cash consideration but at a discounted value like suppose if the par value is ten dollars and the market value is twenty five dollars company has issued the right shares in between these two prices, which might be at $20, $21, $24, it should be lower than the market value, but above the par value. So actually, we issued discounted shares to the existing shareholder. This is right share. So the accounting entry. For the right shares will be cash or bank debit, share capital and share premium. So this is the accounting entry for the right share. 
I wonder all of you guys to please attempt this question and make the relevant accounting entries. No, this this example is not linked with the previous one. This is just a new example. Okay, when you show new shares that is right share, do they count toward the total shares that the company pays dividend for? Yes, it will be counted for the purpose of the even if the company has issued the bonus shares or the right shares, it will be counted subsequently for the dividend purpose.
Should we start? Can you give your answers? Okay, let's start. Banana Bread Limited has issued ordinary share capital of 2,50,000 each with a value of 0.5 and a market value of 1.2. So initially company has issued shares at a market value. So 2,50,000 shares into 1.2. Please do remain with me so that it will be understandable for you guys. We lack cash debit, share capital credit by 0 0.5. Eight lakh purchase of First May 2009, Banana Bread Limited made a right share of 143. 143 means roughly it's 83,000 shares. It is 3,333 shares on, and it was issued at a value of 1.5 per share. So we are taking shares of 83,333 into 1.5 per share. So the bank will be debited by cash or bank. We can use cash account or bank account. Share capital credit and share premium credit. So on approximate basis, it will be cash will be divided by 125,000 shares. 83,333 2.5, it will be 41,667, And the excess amount will go in the share premium account. So 83,334. On 31 December 2009, the directors have decided to pay a dividend of 5 cents per share to all the ordinary shareholders. The company has issued, in fact, 250,000 shares plus 83,333 shares by adding this figure into 
five cents per share. Zero point zero five. So two lakh fifty thousand shares plus eighty three thousand three hundred three. Multiply by zero point zero five. So the amount of the dividend will be sixteen thousand six sixty six. So the calculations are a little bit uh, complex here because of points, decimal places. Okay, the opening balance of the banana bread retail earnings is two lakh, and the profit for the day is one lakh fifty thousand. So how the double entry? So the, uh, this is what we have done already. For the dividend payments, retail earnings have a dividend payable credit, and show the balance sheet. Now we are working on the balance sheet right now. Share capital. Share premium and retain earnings. Initially, we have issued share capital with a value of one lakh twenty-five thousand shares. Then we have to add forty-one thousand six sixty-six in it. Share premium was issued at one lakh seventy-five thousand. Then we have added eighty-three thousand three thirty-three. The share premium for the retain earnings, the opening balance is two lakhs. The profit for the year is one lakh fifty thousand, and out of which we have paid a dividend of sixteen thousand six sixty six. So this is the whole working for this question. So I want all of you guys to please send me your messages on the WhatsApp group so that uh, we can add all of you guys in the group and you can discuss the concepts with the students and with me. So should we move forward or you wanted to ask something? Do you want to ask anything? Uh, if we read the right second entry. Actually, you will be having this video by the end of the session. So you can repeat it as many times as you can, as you want. So I'm sharing my number again. Please to send me the message in the WhatsApp. So that I can add you on the group. Okay. Loan stock and bonds. The loan stock may have a set nominal value with which to repay by the company at a specific time. Do remember this point in companies we use the word loan notes, loan stock, or debentures, which is also having a fixed par value. 
suppose if the par value of a loan stock is hundred dollars and its interest rate is ten percent then you have to calculate the interest always on the par value so interest will be calculated as the par value into the percentage because this loan note can be issued at a value of 150 or at a value of 60 means this loan note can be issued at a premium or at a discount so likewise we have a shares with the par value and the market value concept similar concept is applicable in the companies for the loan stock so loan stock will also have got the fixed nominal value or a par value which could be issued above the par value or below its par value but the interest will always be based on the par value so the accounting entry will be cash debit and loan credit the interest which is the finance cost or the interest should be based on the time period so the number of months or the number of years that you have used the loan amount for which you have to pay the interest okay this loan can be converted into ordinary shares so if we have a loan which can be converted into ordinary shares this type of loan is called convertible loan so examiner might, might ask you the question what is the meaning of convertible loan so convertible loan means the loan which can be converted into ordinary shares Yeah, I have shared my number. I think it's fine. So please do attempt this question. Example number seven. Example seven. Is it done? Example number seven.
Should I solve it or we have already calibrated the bound? Please write something in the chat box so that we can continue with this. Okay, solve this. Okay, the company has issued 30,000 loan notes, 30,000 loan notes, and each is having a buy value of 1.5, 150. So, what will be the total amount of the loan that we have borrowed? It's 30,000 into 150. It will be 45 lakh. Into 10 percent. So the total amount of the interest will be 4 lakh 50 thousand for the year. But that is as the question says that assuming the model limited has the year and a 30 percent symbol, the company has put the loan on first lakh. So the amount of the interest that we should have to charge in the income statement should be for the period of six months. So we take six months interest because we have to utilize the loan for the six months. So for the six months, the amount of the interest will be two lakh twenty five thousand. Is it clear? Is it clear to all of you? Forty percent is a separate requirement. The first requirement is to calculate the interest for the year ended. And the accounting entry will be finance cross debit 225,000 or you can write interest expense or real debit and if the company has paid the amount so it will be cash or if the company has not yet paid the amount it will be interest paid interest expense debit and interest payable debit. Now, the question says if the, if the company has repaid 40% of the loan interest on 30th November, what does it mean? It means that the company has retained 60% of the loans. So, for the 60% loan notes, We have to pay for the 60 percent loan note you have to pay the interest for the six months and for the 40 percent loan you have to pay the interest for the five months because it was re repaid just one month before the year end so therefore you have to calculate so while multiplying 45 lakh Into 0.6, so it will be 2700,000. This 7 lakh into 10 percent, the 40 percent will be 1800.
Two lakh ten thousand. What you wanted to know about the question one? Is it here? Okay, moving forward. Taxation. As you all know that the company has to pay its own tax based on the profit that they have earned. So suppose if the tax rate is 25% and company has earned a profit before tax of 6 lakhs. So you have to pay 25% tax on your profit. So company is the only entity that pays his own tax. So 600,000 in 20%, what will be the answer? The answer will be 1,50,000. So when we book the tax liability, the accounting entry will be tax expense debit. Or tax payable credit and when we pay the tax the accounting entry will be tax payable debit and bank credit is it clear Okay, I'm just reading the point. All the companies have to pay the tax on the taxable profit. The tax is normally estimated. Now, this is a very important point. The tax is normally estimated. This means that the, the amount of the tax expense that we use to usually pay the expenses is not always the same as we have other expenses. Like for the electricity, we have got the fixed electricity bill and you have to pay the electricity bill. For the salaries and wages, you have to pay the fixed salaries and wages. But for the taxation, you have to estimate the tax based on your profits. It might be possible that the taxation authorities will accept this tax, or they will say that the amount of the tax is one eighty thousand. It's not one fifty. 
or they might say that the amount of the tax might be 50,000. So it uh, all depends on the tax rules that they have applied. So we have estimated a tax of 150,000, but on the settlement date, they might ask you to pay 180,000 tax. So this 30,000 tax is called under provided tax. Because we have paid the more amount, but charged in the taxation expense 30,000 less amount. So, just read this wording. Since the amount paid is likely to differ from the estimated tax charge originally, recognize a balance is left on the tax liability being the under or overpaid provision of the tax. So do remember this point. The tax expense for the next year will be equal to the next year's current tax plus last year's underprovided tax. The six tax is just for the example. Yes. Is it clear? What do you want me to adjust to repeat? Under provided tax means that in the previous year we have charged. Let me give you an example first before explaining this. Assuming in 2019, company has booked tax expense of 150. Tax expense debit, the tax payable debit. Do remember this that the tax will always be payable in areas. So 2019 tax will be payable in 2020. Uh, okay. Uh, can you hear my voice now? Yes. Okay. So what we were discussing is actually tax expense debit and tax payable credit by 150 and tax payable debit. So suppose in 2020 when we are going to pay the tax to the government, government tells you that you have to pay the tax of 180. But 
in the previous years you have booked this tax in the income statement as 150 so do we have charged the more expense in the PL or less expense in the PL? in the previous year do we have charged less amount or more amount on the PL as an expense what is your answer less amount in the PL. very good more expense the 2019's original tax expense is actually 180 but we, in the previous year we have charged only 150 so this amount of difference is called under provided because we have charged less tax under provided tax so previous year's expense is under provided by 30,000 so what accounting says that whenever you are going to book 2020's expense just add previous years 30,000 into this tax because we in the previous year we have you have charged the less expense so the balance will be adjusted in the next year so similarly if you have got the over provided it will be deducted from the tax expense i hope it's clear now Okay, here we have a question for you guys. Just attempt this question and calculate the tax expense and tax liability. Just read this question. This question will be more cleared after. Okay, the assignments are available already in the practice handout. I'm just going to open the practice handout. Now, this is our practice handout for today, in which you are required to attempt all the MCQs from MCQ number 1 to 18. So this is our practice handout and our assignment. So I, I request all of you guys to to try to attempt it before the next class so that we can uh, discuss if we are facing any problem. So now, what about this question? Is it done?
Is this question done? When I'm going to solve this question. The city limited estimate the last year tax charge to be 250,000. Now, in 2008, the company has estimated the tax of 250,000. But when in the next year the company is going to settle this amount, the taxation authority says that we have to pay the tax of 250,000, 5,000. So there will be a difference of 3,000. Is it an underprovided or overprovided situation? What do you think? Is it an underprovided or overprovided situation? Wonderful, wonderful. It's an underprovided taxation. It's an underprovided situation. For the next year, we have estimated the tax of 270,000. So for the next year, the tax expense will be 270,000 plus last year's 5,000, which was under provided. The total expense for the current year will be 275,000. Is it clear? So do remember this under provided tax should be added in the next year's taxation and over provided tax will be deducted from here. Because we have charged lesser tax in the expense in the previous year. Therefore, we have to adjust this 5000 in the current year. Now, there's a term in the company, in the company account that is equity. So what is the meaning of equity? So whenever there is a word equity comes, it means share capital plus reserves. Share capital plus reserves mean equity. So if Dana might ask you to calculate the total equity, so mostly students think that equity means share capital. But the right answer is equity means share capital plus reserve. Okay, reserve includes share premium account, reserves includes retain earnings account, reserves includes revaluation reserves account and other reserves okay you cannot distribute dividend from this account You cannot distribute dividend from this account. Only we can distribute dividend from the retail and this account. The examiner might ask you the question about the distribution of the dividend. Can we use the distribution of dividend? Can we distribute the dividend from the share premium account? The answer is no. Can we distribute the dividend from the revaluation of the account? The answer is no. We can only distribute the dividend from the retail earnings account. But share premium account can be used for the bonus shares that we have previously discussed. RR means revaluation reserve. So revaluation reserves 
includes the gains on non current assets but they are actually unrealized gains is that clear Uh, I think let's take a break of 10 minutes and then we will start working on MTQs. Right now we have discussed about the MTQs portion but after this we will be discussing about the MTQs. Yes, the class will be till 2. Okay. Up till now, can you give me a feedback about the session? Are you people are getting benefit from the session? Is it helpful in clearing the concepts? And inshallah, believe me, if you if you took all the sessions and do all the assignments that I will provide it to you. You will definitely get a very good marks in this paper. And the most important part, I think you all should have to thank ACCA for this, that these lectures are also available on ACCA Pakistan page on the Vimeo and YouTube. So it will be an open source lectures, which is free of course resource for all of you guys. The next lecture will be on tomorrow and tomorrow the topic will be the cash flow and with related accounting standards that we will be covering inshallah. So right now we are taking a break of 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we will start according to it's 137 we will start at 147 so if you have any question in your mind just write it in the chat box i will give the answer after the break thank you for coming today Let's meet after the break.
Welcome back again after the break. Can you hear my voice clearly? Is my voice is clear? Okay, let's start the session again. In the company accounts, we have got adjustments of the four items, usually bandage, depreciation and devaluation, stock valuation, equivalent premium and dividend. So we have already covered the dividend area. I just wanted to show you how question in the examination comes. Now this is the type of the question which the examiner might ask you in the examination. So you can see the trial balance. And then we have adjustments. The first adjustment is related to depreciation. Second adjustment, uh, third adjustment is related to inventory valuation. Then general allowance. Then tax expense and 15 cents for the dividend. Now, first, we, I, I'm giving you the assignment. The amounts of the relevant heads are not parked on the debit or credit side. So you are required to park first in the trial balance. Like share capital should be reported in the trial balance on the debit or credit side. It should be placed here or it should be placed here. So all of you guys are required to Tell me that which part will come on the debit side and which part will come on the credit side. So the style of the question, which I wanted to mention here, when we go in specimen exam area, you can see here the style of the question. Let's start to start. This is full specimen exam. It's available here. Now this is the initial screen of the examination. And these are some rules and regulations. And then we can start the question. So this is the first question. Now you can see the format of the question. The first question is MCQs actually. So you have to select one answer out of four. Second, same. Third, you have to select more than one answer. Like two or three is correct, one or three is correct, one, two, three correct. This is another type of the question. Now this is the box style question in which you are required to calculate the answer and write the answer in the box. Now, this is a very important type of the question, which two of the following errors, which two? So you have to select two answers for this question. MCQs, box style, MCQs, true or false, MCQs, two, which two of the following? So there are three to four type of questions which can appear in the examination. Now we are moving towards section B. After 35 questions, 36 will be section B. Now here you can see the MTQ for the company accounts. So we have one adjustment for the bad debts area. You can see here, allowance for receivables. One adjustment is related to depreciation, you can see here. And the 
poor adjustment is related to the cost of sales. One is related to approvals and pre-bookings. So there are type, four types of adjustment. Now, what you need to do? Building at cost. The question is belongs to SFP means whether this heading is related to balance sheet or income statement. Now give your answers. Whether this building at the cost is related to balance sheet or income statement. SFP, yes or no? Building at cost is related to balance sheet or income statement. Yes, it's related to balance sheet. Very good. What about the accumulated depreciation? Balance sheet income statement. Accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is also a contracted account, so it will be towards the balance sheet. Plant at cost, balance sheet. Accumulated depreciation, balance sheet. Bank balance will go in the balance sheet. Revenue is an income statement item. No. Net purchases, income statement item. Inventory, opening, income statement item. Cash, balance sheet item. Payables, balance sheet item. Receivables, balance sheet item. Administrative expense, income statement item. Are you getting how, how, how I'm solving this question? Allowance for the receivables, balance sheet item. Retail earnings, balance sheet item. Equity, balance sheet item. Share premium, balance sheet item. That's it. So your task is completed. So all you need to do is to just mark the item whether it is related to balance sheet or income sheet. Now in this part of the question, usually the question will be given you to you on the drop down menu. The air end allowance for the receivable is given below. Prepare the double entry for selecting the correct option for each of the following. What should be debited and what should be credited? So you have to make this double entry through this drop down menu. But attempting MTQs is very easy and very simple. So it's a clear 15 marks then you can get from the examination directly. Okay. Accumulated depreciation account is actually Accumulated depreciation account is an account having a nature of contrast. The contrast will always go in the balance sheet. Depreciation expense account will go in the income statement. So net purchases allowance for receivable opening will not go on the balance sheet. The closing allowance will go on the balance sheet. That's it. Okay, the question is telling you what belongs to SFP as at 31st October. On, okay, whether it will go, the opening will not go in the balance sheet. Opening balance. The closing balance of the accumulated division will go in the balance sheet. Yes, chapter is right. Likewise, we have removed the opening inventory. Anything opening we have 
same is the case with the opening retain earnings. So this is how we have to attempt this question. Do remember this, the question specifically asks you belongs to SFP as at 31st. So it's all about the date. But there are a number of accounts which will go in the balance sheet, but it's the it's the closing balance that will be put in the balance sheet. So the question is not all, all about the PL balance sheet, it's about uh, the balance sheet figures as at 31st October 2009. So that's why we have removed some of the accounts because only the closing balances of the assets, liabilities, and capital will go in the balance sheet. So I think we are already out of time. So tomorrow we will discuss the MTQs area in more detail. And in the day two, we also have to discuss about the topic, which is cash flow statement. So I request all of you guys to do practice from the Kaplan and BBB kit of all the questions related to the company account. If it is possible for you to go through just the book as well, either a Kaplan or BPP, but at least try to attempt the assignment questions, which I am sharing with you. And the second thing is to do at least one kit for the practice at home. And tomorrow we will start at 11 again, uh, 11 a.m. again. And Tomorrow we'll be discussing about the MTQs of the company account and the cash flow statement. So thank you so much for coming today. And inshallah, we'll discuss the matters tomorrow. And I will uh, create a WhatsApp group uh, in, a, in, a, in an hour or two. So if you have any query related to the company account, you can ask it on the WhatsApp group. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.